Iraq has chemical and biological weapons, which could be activated within 45 minutes. It was a war that divided the nation. Give peace a chance. Millions took to the streets to protest. But the tanks rolled in and Saddam was toppled. Now, with British troops out of the country, a new inquiry is going to look into what exactly took us to war in Iraq in the first place and whether we were prepared enough for it. After 178 deaths, the anger, the sacrifice, Tony Blair's successor, Gordon Brown, announced that there'd be an investigation into exactly what went on behind the scenes. At first, he said it would be held entirely behind closed doors. Evidence will be held in private. In this way, also evidence given by serving and former ministers, military officers and officials will, I believe, be as full and as candid as possible. Now, the inquiry is in fact to be held mainly in public, with only a few sessions behind closed doors when discussing issues of national security. Still, there's another aspect that opposition leader David Cameron isn't happy about. This inquiry is due to take, surprise, surprise, until July or August 2010. <laughs> By delaying the start of the inquiry and by prolonging the publication until after the next election, won't everyone conclude that this inquiry has been fixed to make sure the government avoids having to face up to any inconvenient conclusions? And the Lib Dems' Nick Clegg doesn't think the inquiry will make anything clearer. Everyone knows that the invasion of Iraq was the biggest foreign policy mistake this country has made in generations. The single most controversial decision taken by government since Suez. So, Mr Speaker, I am staggered that the Prime Minister today is seeking to compound that error, fatal for so many of Britain's sons and daughters, by covering up the path that led to it. The inquiry will look at key questions, like the case for war. Why did we go to war in the first place? And was the evidence for it sexed up? It'll also look into whether enough investigation was done into whether the war was even legal. Did the government abuse UN processes to provide cover for the invasion? The war and its aftermath will also be looked at, with claims that soldiers were sent into battle without proper equipment and that there wasn't enough planning for how to rebuild Iraq afterwards. Some say that contributed to the rise of the insurgency. What do we want? Public inquiry! After pressure like this, the inquiry will now be mainly open to the public, although the head of it, Sir John Chilcott, still says some sessions have to be in private to protect national security and to make sure witnesses can be completely candid. Despite that, there are still claims that this inquiry won't go far enough. Sir John Chilcott's denying that. I've said already, um, we are completely determined to write the story fully and frankly on the basis of all the evidence we can get and it's worth emphasising we have complete access to the entirety of the government's records from top to bottom throughout the nine years. And we already have seen more than enough to know nothing is being held back because it can't be. But still, there are many who will only be convinced that's true when we hear the findings in full after the general election.